So uh, I'm here uh, as the person who started a nonprofit social enterprise. I've been doing it for quite a long time, <clears throat> as you can hear from the frog in my throat. And um, I think people often think of me as the nonprofit guy in the space and with this prejudice that nonprofits are going to save the world and business is going to screw it up, right? That's why we started Rubicon Programs. That's why we started Rubicon Bakery. That's a prejudice that some people have in the nonprofit world. And even as we are evolving this whole concept of social business and social entrepreneurship, this prejudice seems to hide out there a little bit. Well, one of my revelatory moments was about a year and a half ago when I was traveling through Bangladesh seeing the amazing work that uh, Muhammad Yunus is doing. And on the bus with me as we were going out to Bogra was a woman who works for Unilever, one of the world's largest corporations, uh, obviously uh, not something anybody would ever uh, confuse with a nonprofit. I was wondering a little bit, why is she here? And, you know, we're, we're, the, we're the good guys, those of us who are the nonprofits on the bus. And it turned out that she was the brand manager for Lifebuoy Soap. Lifebuoy Soap used to be the largest selling soap here in the United States, doesn't exist as a brand here, but still occupies a lot of uh, the world. And she was the brand manager for Unilever for Lifebuoy Soap. Wonderful woman, liked her a lot, still didn't quite get the connection about social business, Grameen Bank, changed the world. Well, it turned out that she had worked as a physician at the World Health Organization for many years trying to do something about infectious diseases in the developing world. She'd worked mightily at this. This had been her whole life and her career and passion, but she felt she wasn't moving the needle. And then she had this opportunity to go to work for Lifebuoy because she realized that, in fact, as you can probably see that little bar of soap there, if she could convince people to start washing their hands, she could have a greater impact on reducing infant mortality throughout the world than any nonprofit has ever had. So she moved from the WHO to become the, the brand manager for Lifebuoy Soap. She started a whole campaign which was called a brand on a mission, thinking again as a business person, and she created this whole campaign of called Global Hand Washing Day. Her goal is that a billion hands will be washed with Lifebuoy Soap within five years, hundreds of thousands of years will be uh, hundreds of thousands of lives will be saved as a result of that. So this whole concept of the counterintuitive, that in fact, how we think about things, how we t typically put things into boxes, really is what we're going to have to change if we're going to create social businesses, if we're going to have a profound way of having businesses and social impact combined. And it's in, in the power of the counterintuitive that real change is going to occur. Another seemingly obvious thing is technology is what's going to solve all these huge problems that we have in the world and that we just have to have greater and greater technology. Well, traveling through Japan, I met a guy named uh, Takio Furano who was starting what's called the duck revolution in Japan. His primary social purpose that he was trying to achieve was solving the ecology challenges. Again, this is pre uh, pre-tsunami and all of that, but we'll be back to this point that maintaining green space in Japan, maintaining a, a lifestyle for farmers was essential for the quality of life in Japan. And technology and one better rice gene was not going to get it done. So he started duck rice. And duck rice is about as low a technology as you can get. It just relies on good old ducks. What he realized is that, well, as you can see, ducks poop, right? Uh, Ducks eat bugs. I, I, I kind of like this when I was trying to find a um, graphic to represent ducks <laughs> eating bugs that came up with. Uh, and so you can choose to do whatever you want with ducks eat bugs and, uh, and, and, as you wish, but that's what ducks do, right? Uh, and then finally, you can eat ducks. So he fundamentally has changed the, the, the farming, rice farming business in Japan, making it a sustainable business, making it an environmentally sustainable business, financially sustainable business, just through one of the oldest technologies, introducing ducks into how rice is grown in Japan. And then finally, uh, thinking again counterintuitively, what it still always comes down to is, well, all these social businesses are great, but let's face it, business is just Darwin in action. It's kill or be killed, right? You can't argue with that. This is all nice, this is all groovy, but at the end of the day, business is business, and business is kill or be killed. 
Well, one of the things you have to do when you give a TED speech is talk about something you know nothing about. And so one of the things I know nothing about uh, is Darwin and theory and all of that. But I do have friends who know it. And in fact, it turns out that the whole concept of evolution is evolving dramatically in people's thinking. And there's a whole theory of the hologenome, which really says that fundamentally, uh, it's at the microbial level that evolution occurs, and it's not kill or be killed, but evolution only occurs through a combination of cooperation and competition. And that's really what social businesses is really striving to, to become, recognizing that co competition matters, but if we're fundamentally gonna make the impacts that we wanna achieve, cooperation as well as competition is what we're gonna have to do. So l let me leave it at that, that we have to think differently. Counterintuition is really what's gonna make us understand social businesses very differently, and that's how change is gonna get affected in the world. So thank you very much.